everybody, and welcome to Tuesday's class for the IMAX School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. It's me again, Sarah, the director of Awesome here at the IMAX. And today, we are going to be doing a divination class, a potion class, and also a little bit of Quidditch practice. And so, hopefully you enjoyed your activities yesterday, and you're ready for more classes, and if you weren't familiar with Harry Potter, maybe you checked out one of the movies or something like that. So, um, as far as divination, if you watched uh, the movies, you would know that is a class where they do um, things like seeing the future, um, they're using their prophecy ball, they're reading tea leaves, uh, Professor Trelawney, and so, um, and if you're like from my Granger, she definitely didn't really believe in it either. So we've got a couple of activities for you for that, and um, one of them is you're going to be reading your tea leaves. And so you want to look through your kit, and um, you're looking for a bag that has a plastic cup, and it should also have in it a little thing of drink mix. And so you want to have that, and then you're going to look for another bag that says Tuesday number one, and inside there's two small sheets of paper. So you want to find those two. Now, when we do this activity here at the iMag, it's a lot easier to do it uh, the right way, um, a little harder with you at home because you get to see everything as you're putting it together. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can see the activity yourself and just kind of know what's happening, or you can find somebody at home and do this activity with them so that they are surprised and um, getting to see their team. So I'm going to do this as if you're setting it up for another person. And so I'm actually going to use my little teacup. Mine's a little bit fancier. It has a handle on it. Um, so you're going to take that drink mix, and you're going to put some in your cup. Now, this is intended to fill up a water bottle, which is 16 ounces. This cup is like four ounces. So you don't want to put all of it because it's going to be super strong drink if you do that. But what you want to do is take the powder, and you want to cover the bottom of the cup. Because if you look through your cup, you're going to notice, and I'll show you on this one, you're going to notice there's a little picture on the bottom. Now, everybody got different cups with different pictures, and so some of you might have the same picture, but there's a lot of different pictures. So you want to cover that up. And when you do this activity, if you do this for another person and have them beat their tea leaves, what they're going to do is add some water. And when they add the water to the cup, obviously it's going to turn a bright color because of the drink mix that you put in it. And so um, you can mix it up if you want to use a spoon or something like that. And then what they're going to do is you've got two sheets of paper here. One of them is your divination color chart. So you're going to look on there and you're going to see what color did my drink turn. And so my fortune for that one is the orange is scholarly successful happen. So I'm going to be well in school. So that's a good fortune. Um, there's different ones for different colors. It depends on which drink that you got. And then the other one is your divination class. Um, it's going to be the symbols. And so the cup that I showed you had a snake on the bottom. If you look on the chart and you find a snake, that means enemy or falsehood. And it says examine pets for hidden animagi. So that means that maybe one of your pets is actually a wizard hiding as a pet. Just be careful. And then um, I'm going to take a sip of mine. Very orange. I'm going to pour this out so you can see um, my symbol on this one. And so on this cup, I actually got the brim. And so um, if you've seen Harry Potter and you know Professor Trelawney, she's like, you brought the grim. The grim is not a good fortune. And so the grim means danger, death, watch your back, dementors may be near. So you need to watch out for some dementors. So that's just a fun little activity, just kind of like a fun Harry Potter activity. If you want to look at the science behind some of it, with the drink mix and the um, water that you added. So at that point, were you doing a physical change? Were you doing a chemical change? Remember the chemical change can make something new. With a physical change, you're just changing the way something looks. So definitely physical change happening in there where we change the color of the water to orange. We have the drink mix, which is that flavored crystal. So my question to you is, was it a chemical change? Is there a way for me to get the drink mix back? What if I let the water evaporate? Would there just be drink mix at the bottom? Um, things like that. It's also a solution. You're mixing two things together. So still a little bit of chemistry, even when it's just a silly little activity like that. So the second part of your divination class is you are making a prophecy ball. So if you see mine right here, super cute, um, should have a little clear candlestick and the same bag that you found your cup. 
You will also find in there, I'm making a mess already. You're gonna find an ornament. So there's two halves of the ornament and there's also a little tea light. And when you turn the tea light on, it's blue. So uh, the prophecy balls that they use have a nice glowing light to them. So a couple ways you can do this. Um, right now I'm just putting the tea light in. You can see it, it's in there, but it's still glowing blue. Now what I did, and this is if you've got paint at home, or um, you do have paint in your kit, if you look for the activity um, where you're going to be painting in the canvas, and there's some paint in there because you're going to be light up constellations. So if you look for the light up constellation kit, there is paint and there's a brush in there. So if you want, you can actually paint the prophecy ball so that you don't actually see the tea light. And so that's what I did here. I actually took some of that paint and I painted it. I added glitter because I'm a little bit fancy. But so that made my prophecy ball glow. And so I've got that really cool blue glowing prophecy ball here. Uh, and with that, if you want to look at what kind of concepts that we're dealing with that, we've got illumination from the light. And then as far as the actual prophecy ball, by adding the paint, we're taking something that's translucent, making it opaque. So there's some good words for you there as well, as far as what you're doing. But that's going to make your awesome little prophecy ball that you've got there. Now, I'm going to do the next two activities kind of out of order, because the last one's a little bit um, more dangerous and messy, so I figured we'd do that last. So the next one I'm going to do is your Quidditch practice. And so for that, you're looking for the bag that says Tuesday activity number three. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. We're going to go through that. So what you're going to be making is your snitch catapult. So if you don't know what a snitch is, this is our golden snitch here. And so this is used in Quidditch. This is what your seeker is searching for. And if you catch it, you win the game. Um, and it's very hard to capture, it flies very fast. Um, and so this is our snitch. This is the snitch you're making. So I already made mine. And then you're making a catapult, because we're doing catapult quidditch. And so got my snitch ball here, I've got my catapult. I'm gonna show you how I made those. So um, I will tell you, and this is my fault, um, I left off and a supply that you actually need for this activity, which is a spoon. So um, you go through your kit, look for some extra spoons, or if you have a plastic spoon at home, you may want to grab that, uh, because otherwise it's a little bit difficult to actually launch your snitch. So for this activity, I'm going to take everything out, and then um, you're also going to need some tape and some scissors. And so uh, for this one, what I'm going to do first, so I'm going to cut out my wings. And so you have a pair of snitch wings. And so it wouldn't be a golden snitch if it didn't have wings. And so they're out of cardstock. So I'm going to cut mine out. And so you're gonna have two wings. And then you're gonna use a little bit of tape. And I'm just going to tape them and they've got little tabs on them. And so I'm just going to tape that onto my gold ping pong ball. I'm going to get another piece of tape. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And so now I've got my wings on here and I've got them taped on. So actually that was upside down. So there you go. So there's my little golden snitch. And so as far as your catapult, you have your rubber bands in there. So you should have six rubber bands. I'm going to have to borrow one from the catapult I already built. So, what we're going to do is you have nine craft sticks here. So you want to take seven of them. So take seven craft sticks, put them in a stack, and then you're going to use your rubber bands to stack them and keep them connected. And so I'm going to keep twisting. And you want it to be pretty snug, so you don't want them to move around a lot. I'm gonna do that over here. Now, um, at the end, I'm gonna explain a little bit on variations you can do with this activity to make it more of a science experiment. So the concepts that you're learning when you build your catapult are actually, I mean, it's across the board, but it's science because we're gonna be talking about Newton's laws, it's physics, um, and then it's also going to be engineering because we are building something. It's also math because you're having to count things. So lots of different things going on here. Now, the other part you're going to do is you're going to take the other two craft sticks. Same thing. You're going to use your rubber band. 
and you're just gonna wrap it around one end. So only one end this time, not both ends. Definitely won't work if you do both ends. And so then you're gonna take those two and kind of open them like this. And you're gonna slide them over the stack like this. And this is actually gonna be the hardest part, so next step. So what you wanna do, take your rubber band, you're gonna go over this end and over here, twist and go back. All you're doing is you're combining the two. So you're just gonna keep twisting and going back over, twist, go back over. Sometimes it's a lot easier if you have another person helping you. So I've got this across the one side and now I'm gonna do it to the other side. So same thing, over the end, over here, twist, go back, twist, come back, twist, come back. So now you should have a little X over the middle where your um, popsicle sticks are crossing each other and it's perpendicular. And so then the next thing you're gonna do, this is where I sang, it's my fault, we left off that you need a spoon. So you can find a plastic spoon and you wanna put your spoon in here. And you're gonna take that last rubber band. And what I did is I actually tucked my spoon through the rubber bands um, that crisscross over that perpendicular area. And then I'm gonna take the other rubber band and I'm going to attach the spoon. And so now my spoon is attached to our uh, catapult here and here so it doesn't move around a lot. And then you've got your stitch and we're gonna put our stitch in the spoon. Now, the best way to use your catapult to make it actually launch, I'm not gonna go crazy, is I usually hold down the end of the spoon or the end of the popsicle sticks here on the table. And you just wanna put your finger on the very back of the spoon and then launch. And so that's gonna make your golden snitch launch. Now, what kind of concepts are we learning with this? So physics, uh, a couple different things here. Newton's laws. So Newton has three laws of motion. And the first law states, for, um, sorry, an object at rest will stay at rest. An object at motion will stay in motion until an unbalanced force acts upon it. So what that means is, when I put my golden snitch on here, it's something called inertia. It means it's not gonna go anywhere. Right now, everything's balanced. I have to apply a force to make it move. And so when I launch it, I'm applying a force, and so that's gonna make it be in motion. Now, the reason it doesn't stay in motion forever is because we're on Earth and we have gravity, and gravity's actually gonna be pulling it back down, and it's also going through the air, and so the air is actually slowing it down too, and that's drag. Now, the second law states force equals mass times acceleration. So it's a math problem. So the force that I'm applying is gonna make it move. So depending on the mass, how heavy this is, um, it's gonna depend on how much force I need to apply to move it. This obviously doesn't have a lot of mass, it's not very heavy. I don't have to apply a lot of force to make it move. If I apply more force, it'll make it go further and faster. And then that third law states, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I pull back, release, and I launch it forward. So that's gonna be Newton's three laws. The other thing we're dealing with here is potential and kinetic energy. So when I pull back, that's gonna be potential energy. It's like when you're on a roller coaster and you're at the very tippy top, that's potential. The minute you start moving, that's kinetic. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So we're going from potential to kinetic energy when we launch. So lots of different science concepts happening here with our snitch catapult. Now, you're probably wondering, why do I have three cups? So if you ever have watched Harry Potter and you know they have the three rings, um, which you can actually um, use for goals, that's what your cups are gonna be for. So you can actually set your cups up somewhere and you can try launching your snitch into the cups. And so now you're actually having to pay attention to trajectory, how much force you're applying, things like that, trying to actually aim for something and get it inside of the target. So once you've actually practiced and gotten good at launching your snitch catapult, you can use those cups and actually play a little game of snitch catapult. And so, um, footage. And so uh, if you want, this is a good game you can play with someone at home, set your cups up, have you guys take turns trying to actually get them inside the cups. Now, for your next activities, this is gonna be a potions class, and it says on here, burning basil skin and pH experiment. 
So you guys are not doing the burning basil at home. Uh, my campers that are here on campus, they will be doing that. I will be doing it with them. I'm gonna do it as a demonstration for you here instead. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But you do have your supplies for your pH experiments. And so this is actually a Colavaria charm. Colavaria is color change. So the directions that were posted for you, and again, there's also the uh, directions for your snitch catapult were also posted, so you should have those as well. So if you're trying to follow along and need a little extra help, that's all in there too. So what we're gonna do, got our directions here. You want those directions because at the bottom of the page, there's a pH scale. And so when you're dealing with pH and we're looking at acids and bases, um, there's a scale that goes from 1 to 14. So when something's neutral, it's going to be in the middle around a 7 or an 8. The smaller the number, the more acidic. The higher the number, the more basic. And so depending on what indicator you use, it's going to decide what the colors are. But this is generally the colors you'll get with your pH scale. Um, so things that will have different levels of pH. So right in the middle is usually pure water. So when we say pure water, it's not gonna be water of your tap. If you test the water of your tap, which you can do in this experiment, you're gonna see it might not be neutral. To have really neutral water, you actually need distilled water. So distilled water, if I have the grocery store in a jug, uh, usually has a purple label, it'll say distilled. So this is gonna be neutral water. Now, the trick with this is, as soon as you open this and use this for anything, it's no longer truly distilled or pure water because air is getting in, carbon dioxide is getting in, carbon dioxide is acidic, it's gonna change the pH of your water. But straight out of the jug, it is actually neutral. Um, things that are acidic, lemon juice, coffee, um, all of those things are gonna be on the acidic side. Gastric acid in your stomach, it's one of the strongest acids, it's crazy, it's in your stomach, that it helps you digest your food. Um, that is one reason actually the lining of your stomach actually replaces itself constantly because of the strength of the acids inside your stomach. It's also why people a lot of times take antacids because there's too much acid happening. Um, things that are basic, usually it's gonna be like cleaning products. So baking soda, ammonia, bleach, those things are gonna be basic. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna test those things today. So in this kit, you have citric acid, you have baking soda, and then you also have your jimmy powder, and you had a few empty cups. And so the reason you have those empty cups, and I did my water bottles on my table, um, is because you're actually gonna be mixing a couple things. You are gonna need water for this experiment. You should also have a little pipette. Um, I have a couple of extra liquids that we're also gonna test, just because I wanna show you that there's other things you can test other than what we sent for you. So what I want you to do, is go ahead and fill up those empty portion cups like halfway with water. Again, if you have distilled water, that's your best option. If you don't, bottled water is the second best. After that, tap water is fine. Um, and then you have your jiffy powder. Now, a couple different things you can do with this. You don't need to use all of this now. You can save this and test other things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in here. And I'm gonna fill it almost up to the top. Um, if you have a spoon, that would also be great for this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stir up my jiffy powder. If you don't have a spoon handy, if you're very careful, you can put the lid on your portion cup and shake it up to get it mixed up. I'm going to grab a paper towel because it's messy. And you're going to notice a smell right away. So jiffy powder is extracted from red cabbage. Red cabbage is a natural um, acid and base indicator. I used to have to actually make this stuff at home by boiling red cabbage in distilled water and draining out the cabbage and keeping the liquid. This is a way easier way to do this. Still does not smell very pleasant. Um, so now what you want to do is you have two containers. You have baking soda. So I'm going to sprinkle some baking soda in my water. And I wiped off my spoon, so I'm going to stir that up. And I'm going to wipe off my spoon again. So I'm trying not to cross-contaminate here. And then I have citric acid. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some citric acid into the other cup of water. Now, I'm going to put the lids back on these. So the reason I also did this is to show you, you have a lot left over. You can do more experiments with these. So that's why I wanted to show you, if we add this to water, you're going to be left over with extra citric acid, extra baking soda, so more experiments for you. And I'm gonna go ahead 
and I'm gonna stir up my citric acid. So what I've done is I've made two solutions. One of them has baking soda, one of them has citric acid. And I'm gonna come back over here, and I'm gonna get some of that jiffy juice now. And I'm gonna go ahead and, first I'm gonna put some drops into that baking soda solution. And what you're going to see, hopefully you can see this in the light, it turned bright blue. And so if we look at our pH scale, that makes sense, it's basic. So for that indicator, that makes sense, it's gonna be on that blue purple side. So we got that really cool blue color going on. Now you wanna be careful when you're adding your Jiffy powder, your Jiffy juice, you don't wanna to actually touch the liquid with it because then you're gonna contaminate your pipette. So I'm gonna come back, I'm going to get more, and I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing to my citric acid solution. And what you're gonna see is that one actually is turning, I'm gonna try and tilt my cup, bright pink. And so if you look at the two cups next to each other, one's blue, one's pink, Again, that's gonna make sense because citric acid is on the acid side. And so that's why we get that bright pink color that's happening right there. Now, I grabbed a couple extra containers of liquids just so we could test a few more things. Again, if you have things at home that you're allowed to use, make sure you ask first. You've got plenty of this liquid left from this Jiffy powder. You can test other things in your house and find out if they're acidic or basic. You could do a whole experiment just testing water. You could test tap water. You could test the water in your kitchen sink, the, the water in your bathroom, the water outside. You could test different kinds of bottled water. So this is just a generic Sam's Club water. Is it different than Dasani? Is it different than Zephyr Hills? You could try doing the distilled water. You're gonna get all different colors. Um, what we're gonna test right now is we're gonna do lemon juice ammonia, and then I just have some water. And so same thing, I'm gonna take some of that Jiffy um, juice, we're gonna keep calling it here in my indicator. I'm putting it in my lemon juice. I'm putting it in the ammonia. And then I'm adding it to some water. And so you can see that from the camera from above. So this over here is my lemon juice. My lemon juice is now a bright pink. This was my ammonia, it's now a green. And then look, my water, definitely on the acidic side. So I can actually put this over here. And so I can actually put these in order according to my pH scale. So if I look at my pH scale, I've actually all got my liquids in order to match my pH scale. And so this is just a fun experiment. You're gonna get lots of really cool different colors. Again, you can test different liquids at home. Another good one to test is soda. So if you use clear soda, that works the best. Um, but lots of things you can test. And so you've got plenty of this. I would actually keep this for just some more experiments that you have. So put it somewhere safe with the lid on. Uh, the different liquids that you've tested for this experiment, my suggestion is that you actually dispose of them afterwards. You can actually dispose of them um, in the sink and that's fine. And then just throw the containers away. So I am, also if you do what I'm doing, you're doing a nice little chemical reaction because there's citric acid and baking soda in there. So I'm getting a nice fizzy, foamy acid base reaction. So I'm gonna move all of this out of the way and we're gonna do our last experiment. Now for this one, this is just one for you to watch, not one for you to do. So, I'm gonna grab my ingredients here. All right, so this experiment is called the burning basilisk skin. So if you know what the basilisk is in Harry Potter, the basilisk was the snake or um, the giant snake. And so the goal is to actually make a snake happen. I did it yesterday, kind of worked. I got some little snakes. Um, and so what's happening here is, um, combustion. I will tell you one of the main ingredients is powdered sugar. I'm not going to tell you the other things that I'm using because I don't want you to try this at home. This is definitely a don't try this at home. Just watch this here with me because it does involve fire. So I am not actually going to tell you all of the ingredients and things that I use for it. I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. Um, so for this one, we are, but the important part is the sugar. And so what's happening with this is when we do this experiment, we're making some carbon dioxide gas and it's actually pushing out carbonate from the sugar. And so there's carbon in the sugar. 
And so that's what's gonna make this cool black snake looking thing that's gonna come out of this. Um, also definitely a chemical change because we are involved in fire. Anytime you're cooking using fire, that is a chemical change because again, I can't get back the original ingredients after I'm done, I've made something new. And so we're gonna go ahead and try this. So I'm going to my powder. And I am gonna show you, I have my one from yesterday that's left. So this pan, the black part that's left, this kind of crunchy looking thing we got going on here is the leftovers from my sink yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Again, I'm not telling you what I'm using because I don't want you trying this at home. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that in there. And I am going to, let's see here. Here I make some more room on my table. Move some things over. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and make I know, it's important. Look for my bottles. Somehow they're too far away. So putting these off really quick. Put these on. And we're gonna go ahead and ignite. And so with this, I'm gonna go ahead and let that burn for a little bit. And the light from our ring light's really bright, but it takes a minute as it's burning for the reaction to start. And then what we're gonna to start to get is these little black snakes that are gonna start coming off of the sugar that we have here. And again, it's not just sugar, so you're not gonna try this at home because it would not work because it's not all the ingredients. There's something else mixed in with my sugar. And also I did not tell you what I was using for my cake. Um, but so as this burns, again, the carbon dioxide gas that's happening in there is forcing out the carbonate from the sugar, and that's why we're getting these cool snake-like protrusions that are actually happening um, here. Now, when I do this with my campers here, I'm going to be doing a bigger version, but it takes a lot longer to burn, it takes a lot longer to react, and I figured you didn't want to just stand here staring at me while this is actually burning. So, also, it smells really good. It smells like uh, roasting marshmallows right now. So we're kind of burning down here, and we've got those really cool snake-like protrusions that are happening um, in different sections of um, our sugar mixture that's on here. We've got a really cool one happening over here that's kind of protruding over there. So that's why we're gonna call this our burning basilisk skin. Now, that is the end of your experiments for this morning. This afternoon, well actually first, there's gonna be a Meet the Keeper at 10.15, so be sure to tune in for that. And then this afternoon, you have class with your teacher, you're gonna be doing some transfiguration, some herbology, and some astronomy. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.